Back in November of 2016, I released a video on YouTube of me driving the Porsche 962 around the Nordschleife. At the time, it was a new car to a set of Corsa. I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and beat Stefan Beloff's record of a 6.11. It's fair to say in that video that my lap was a long way off. I ended up setting a time of a 6.42.5, which is a massive 31 seconds off that mythical time set by Beloff. Fast forward just over a year later to December 2017, and I decided to give it another go, this time using my, at the time, newly acquired direct drive wheel. And I managed to bring my time down quite considerably, down to a 626.165, but still 15 seconds off the 611. Then we jump forward to the start of this year, 2019, where I decided to try again to better my time in the Porsche 962, this time live on stream. And I managed to improve my time, but not by much, knocking my PB down to a 622 flat. So in this video, I'm going to try and achieve something that I have effectively been chasing for nearly three years, which is to try and beat that 6 minute 11 seconds set by Stefan Beloff. So I'm not really sure how long this video is going to be or if I'm even going to end up achieving my goal. I'm going to say we are, of course, because positive mental attitude. Hopefully that will help. And I'm really going to just try and pick up where I left off after setting the 622 back earlier on this year with the same setup and just try and get used to the car again. It's been a while since I've driven the 962, so getting used to it again is going to be a big part of this video. I tell you what, it's good to be back inside the 962. I'm looking forward to this. It's probably going to be a bit of an uphill struggle, but that's the fun about hot lapping. It's just trying to get the most out of this car. And this is a car... Well, there's a lot of time in it. It's incredibly fast and incredibly sketchy, but that's what makes Group C so much fun now of course this is a h pattern so i've got my h pattern shifter here on the right i don't have to use my clutch on the way up but i kind of do want to use it on the way down just to make sure the shift goes in and really right now the car is up a temperature and ready to go quick but this, i'm going to use this as an outlap just to get used to the movements again of driving this car i mean this is where my Nordschleife series kind of started really a long time ago. This is in the transit van, which is weird to say in the same sentence, but so it's kind of fitting for me to come back now and really try and go as quick as I can. The thing is, for the Nordschleife videos, I'll go out and do two or three laps. The time you see isn't the ultimate time I could get out of the car because that takes probably about an hour or an hour and a half to get to that point. But I'm going to put in that time today and really, really try, I mean properly try, to get this 611. It's something that I've wanted to do for a long time. I drive this sometimes off camera as well because I guess it's just my favorite combo. So if we can do it on camera, then that would be a hell of an achievement. But anyway, I'm going to go get warmed up and then I guess uh, you'll join me for some of the flying lap coming up. Tell you what, I've forgotten just how uh, bumpy this thing is around here. I've got the full feedback set to what I usually use for, this, uh, use for this, sorry, which is quite aggressive as you can imagine. These things don't have any power steering um, from what I can tell. So it really is a very aggressive thing to drive. Anyway, let's see how we do on our first flyer. Feel like a decent lap so far. We'll have to wait and see if we can put it all together. Oh, damn it. Just misjudged the turn in. That'd have been ripping real life. Oh, I'm going to have to change the setup, I think. Car does not like the carousel at all. Lose a lot of time there. Few second here though. Just little mistakes bumping off the curbs. 
setup is just too low, too stiff. So we've got 622 to beat for our PB. Looking like we might be able to do that if we get through the last part cleanly. 611 seems unlikely. Hopefully we can beat that 22. There's the 11. Okay, big step forward though. 617.2, so we've just taken five seconds out of it on our first lap alone. Um, so we've got six seconds to find out there, which I think a lot of it can come and set up. We were really slow for the carousels. There's probably about at least two seconds there, I think. Either just drive it harder, a bit more comfortable. I was really driving that thing. I'm, I'm working up a sweat already. As you can probably see, I've worn the worst shirt for it. This really shows off how sweaty I get. But that is good progress. Uh, we're moving forward, so I'm going to probably go back, have a quick peek at the setup, maybe uh, soften it up a tiny bit, just a tiny bit, and then go out again and see if we can get any closer. Right, so the changes made are actually quite simple. I've taken off more rear wing, running quite low rear wing now, because I don't think I need it around here. The car is stuck to the ground a lot through most of the high speed stuff, so I'm hoping we can get a little more speed like that. I've also raised the ride height um, all round, so we're a little bit higher now, which means we might lose a little bit of time through some of the fast sweeping stuff, but I'm hoping that the downforce and then through the slower stuff and the bumpier bits like the carousel, hopefully we'll make that time back up again. So, yeah, let's go give it a go. So just a quick thought while I'm on my outlap, and that is about the Stefan Bell of the real life lap itself. Now that was set during a qualifying session. Of course, you're seeing how hard I'm pushing in a simulator. Imagine doing that in real life with traffic on the circuit. I mean, there are there are some that say that he could have gone even quicker, but it was actually held up by traffic in uh, in some of the corners. So that just kind of goes to show just how mental that that was. And also, I'm in the 962, not a 956. This is an evolution of the car that uh, Beloff drove. So if anything, everything is in my favour. I mean, everything is, but I still can't quite get there. I mean, that lap is what I would give to see onboard footage of that. Unfortunately, none exists, but uh, man, that would be some ride. Awful line. Let's try and get a bit close from the curb that time. Damn it. Ah, feck. God, so easy to do that around here. Things the curves, though, you, you want to try and get as close to the curves as you can when you're driving the car hard, but it's so difficult to run that line. All the, like, all the grip around here is right next to these big old fucking fat sausage curves. You touch them and you spin just like that. So, setup, though, feels. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a step forward or a step backward. It's a bit quicker, I think, but to be honest, I'm still bottoming, bottoming out on the carousel, even with this higher ride height. I don't want to go much higher, because I feel like I'll be sacrificing speed everywhere else. So I might just go back to the pits and uh, put the ride height back to how it was, but uh, we'll give it one lap at least. Tell the Rebel Tree. So you guys are probably wondering, why are you doing this, Jimmy? You know, um, there are lots of other things out for sim racing right now, and you're kind of revisiting something that you've done a few times before, but because for me, this is... This is like a personal goal now. It's a, a goal I set myself a long time ago. When I first did that six, uh, 646, I think it was, or whatever the hell it was on my first attempt, I was like, oh man, I'm never going to get that. But since then, you know, I've improved as a sim racer. I think I'm a better driver than I was back then as well. And I, um, I've just got done a lot more laps around the Nordschleife and in this car. And it's just a goal that I want to see achieved. It would mean a lot to me to be able to do it. I'm not... You know, I'm aware people have already done it. In fact, one of my good friends, Mr. Oscar Hardwick, has done it. I was asking him for tips earlier on. I'm aware that I'm never going to be the fastest guy around here in this car, but that doesn't matter. I'm just going to be happy getting that 611. And uh, I think a lot of people should take that attitude into sim racing sometimes. It doesn't matter if there's a guy faster than you. There's always going to be a guy faster than you. See Stephen Bailey, for example. But if you can beat your own goals, then that's progress. And that's exactly what this video is about. It's not a good start, really. It's trying to break later and later into there. But I'm not sure if it's actually benefiting me at all. We get our first time check just before the rebel tree, so we'll have a look then. I 
terrible line through there. Oh god, this is a bad section. Just get out of rhythm, me start touching the curves. Yeah, down, only just down though. There you go, on the throttle nice and early there. Next time checks after the carousel. I mean, it's going to be as quick as our last attempt, but if, if we can improve, that's still a step forward. Up by a second, so we still are gaining time. And we've got the long straight at the end with less wings, so that will gain us some time as well. Even more if we're tidy through here. God, that curve is scary. I've got a little bit less drag down the straight this time, so we should have to pick up a little bit of time. But can we get underneath 617? Oh. I had a little break after this. This car really takes it out of you. I need some of my... I need some Bottas porridge. Anyway, let's focus on this half part of that now. Six fourteen six. We gained one and a half seconds in that last sector. We're now only three seconds away. We've chopped that in half, and there are mistakes. There's time out there. Big mistakes. Where I've touched the grass a little bit, or I've gone a bit wide, or made mistakes. There's time to carry as well through the carousel. We've got at least a second in the first sector, and I'm feeling good on this setup. The only time we're losing, the only place we're losing time is the carousel. I can't quite get in there. Second carousel, I can kind of carry second through there. It's okay anymore. And I start bottoming out. So, um, yeah, 6.14.6. I'm feeling good. This could be the day. This could be finally be the day. Okay, so I'm back for my little break. I just made sure to get some water in me because this is sweaty work driving this car. And had a little bit of a think about what I could do to just try and find that time uh, as efficiently as possible. First of all, I've taken off the last of the rear wing. We just don't need it, I think, around here. There's no point where I think the rear is loose. And all we do is stand to gain more top speed and more acceleration. So I'm definitely going to go for that uh, when I can. I've also changed the tyre pressure slightly. I think I wasn't quite getting the optimum tyre pressure uh, when the tyres were hot. So I'm hoping that'll give me a little bit more grip in some of the, the corners and just help me find that extra little bit of time. That, I think, coupled with... Um, just getting a clean lap in, I think, might be enough to tip us over the 6.11. And it is a 6.11.1 I need to beat. So it's right down the bottom. So I've really got to make sure I just smash this lap. A bit cleaner this time through this section. That's what needs to happen. Second up already. Come on. Ah, oh, I hit the curb. Disaster. Damn it. Just getting too close to the curve. You see what happens. I'm just trying to get right as close as I can. That's where all the grip is. Yeah, lost time there. Only a second up now. Touching the curves, they're ruining my lap. I keep bouncing off them. The lines are good, but just a little bit too tight. I don't know, it was a decent last sector there. A couple of little mistakes, but carried a lot of speed, so we'll just have to wait and see. God, this straight at the end is horrible when you're chasing lap time. You just want it to end as quick as you can. Come on! Oh, 6.11.7! Oh! I'm like six tenths off and you can see just how hard I pushed at the end there. <laughs> oh, man! So close, but I know where the time is. You guys saw where the time was in that lap. You guys saw exactly where it was. This setup is fine. 
It's now down to me. It's all down to me. Three years I've been trying to do this. Three years. And there's only six attempts to find. Oh man! <laughs> Let's go get it. Ah! Damn it! Uh, well, if there's any doubt to how hard I'm trying and how hard I'm pushing there, there you go. You can see it on screen. And yay! Six minutes now of driving around until I get to try it again. I love you, Nurburgring. Fudge! I'm just trying too hard now. I know it's there. I know it's there, and I'm like, yeah, okay, just push it a little bit more, and I'm just trying a bit too hard. Heck. <sighs> this is starting to get tricky. I'm starting to get a bit fatigued as well. I'm, you can probably see I'm sweating away like a madman here. I just, it's really hard to get the focus. I can get the first part of the lap kind of okay. The thing is, the first part of the lap doesn't have to be perfect. It can be like it was on that lap, not be fast, to be a temp slower. What I've got to do is put this middle section together. This is where I lost all the time on the last lap, especially the hairpin. Like, I bopped the curb, had a really messy exit, lost at least the time I would need to beat the 7, uh, sorry, the 6, 11.1 there just at that corner, but it's getting there, and then doing that, and then doing the rest of the lap properly, so... Oh, maybe I need to have something to eat quick. This is why I dislike hot lapping. I always get up to a decent pace and I know there's more time in the car and on the track, but I just, I'm really bad at extracting it. It's why I'm so bad at qualifying. I tend, in a race, I tend to just chill out a bit and drive at 95% and then somehow the time comes, but I know I have to push to get that time. And like there, for example, I feckin' missed a shift before I, like just literally as I, as I uh, crossed the start finish line to start a lap. So I, I have to do an entire lap Knowing that I can't get that time now, I've got to wait another six and a half minutes to get round. So it's a good good chance to relax and try other lines, etc. And just get an idea of what the car is doing at certain points of the circuit. But mostly it's just frustrating because I want to be attacking the circuit. I don't want to be fucking doing super shit like that. Damn it! The car got loose coming over the crest there and I just couldn't break and the, the, the tires weren't all on the floor so I was braking and I wasn't getting any force couldn't slow down in time and not only that first sector was alright fuck of course the upside to making all these mistakes is I get a lot of practice for the last sector and I'm really starting to nail some of these faster corners now so there's just more and more time on the table again it's just a matter of putting it all together
Missed the gear on the way in. One point four seconds up, come on. Keep missing shifts. Sweaty mess. 611 I know people have gone quicker. I know I could go quicker, but to put that all together is so difficult. And on my 16th lap of trying, we beat it. I finally beat it. 611.1 only by a couple of hundreds, but I don't care. I've been trying to do this for three years. Three years I've been on and off trying to do this and I've steadily got quicker. Started in the 640, made our way slowly down and today finally breaking it, finally. Oh my word, I need a shower and a bath and a massive wank, victory wank after that. My word. Guys, thank you all so much for joining me for this video and a bit of a journey this one. This is a more of a, it's a very personal thing to me to be able to finally do this. I know, again, it's not it's just a, a time trial I set myself a few years ago, but to finally get it done and to share it with you guys is an awesome feeling. So, as always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. If you really enjoyed it, then feel free to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon below. That way, you'll be made notified of future videos like this and the future streams. Thank you so much to my patrons and sponsors for keeping this channel alive, and thank you all for you guys for letting me do this as my job. 
It's so cool to wake up every day and get to do fun things like this and entertain you guys. It truly is a, uh, a fantastic life. So thank you. Take care. Have an awesome day. See you all next time.